we like it uh, here. So this is probably a good place to uh, pa uh, complete the stream for today. And, and let's listen, let's listen in um, to these two lines that we've gotten to on variation two. And uh, for, first we'll listen to the backbone. Then we'll listen to it in variation two. Definitely different. And now uh, let's let us hear the rest of it. Uh, the the cadences. Uh, no more soloing there. So these are the first two lines of the first variation. These are the first two lines of variation two. And everything's consistent. So we'll save there and do a recap. Sirs and madams, wherever you are, thank you as always for your time, attention, and interest, and patience in what we're doing. This is a recap of composing a ballad in C full tonality. We are in part 10, continuing moving forward. So we worked with our checklists again, and we reminded ourselves that in the overall scheme of things, moving forward, we're pushing from the major scales in traditional 4 3 chords, and now we're pushing the major scale in extended chords, C2-2, two, two, D3-2, two, etc. And we're pushing eventually to have a nice full tonality composition. And the familiar territory that we're pushing from is traditional chords, like 4-3 that we had over here. And then passing notes. Now passing notes are actually familiar territory in some sense, uh, but they weren't to us. We weren't really thinking of them that way. And in rediscovering that passing notes are a key part of familiar composition, we realized that there's a thing called passing chords that we have started to want to pay attention to, which we did in the last two streams. And then the other thing that we're very much back to focusing on is using lists are listening to what sounds cool and trying to blend that with the things we've learned in terms of designs. And we have multiple design tools. Uh, if, if listening is kind of our traditional ear sense, our extended senses are having uh, musical scores that have built in synthesizers and we have diagrams that we're using and uh, spreadsheets and these are in some sense our extended senses and uh, we also talked about getting feedback on these streams from people which is a kind of partnership with other people that is you could call part of our extended perception uh, we have memory of what things sound like and now we have interactions with others and when they give us feedback it's partnerships with others 
then we used our checklist and here the uh, yellow is uh, referencing what we did for variation what was that the the yellow is uh, variation two is in yellow I'm sorry variation three is in yellow and, and we got a lot done on variation three. You see all these things over here. There's still there's still some more to go here in variation three. But we ship, we switched our focus to the second variation, which had been kind of the stepchild. And we've been going back and we got base cadences in place. Um, and we went through and we're working now on getting the backbone notes in place that agree with the cadences and basically worked through two lines of that and then uh, melody beat notes in place that agree with the backbone notes and we've got through two lines of that and then we actually uh, kind of got ahead of ourselves with respect to variation three uh, we've actually gone so far as to start getting some passing chords I want to say it differently there. Passing notes in place. Uh, in particular, we did that for row one and row two. So this checklist, as we discussed, along with the other tools, is helping us avoid getting lost and losing track of following for our own purposes of what we're doing. So, I, get, I think the other cool thing that was really of interest is when we pick these passing notes, these are the new passing notes in variation two, in variation two, Compared with variation one, we had to push, we had to push the melody notes at the beginning, at the end. We had to push them outside where we were uh, working before. Here, we had to we had to push from here to here. Whereas when you look up here, everything we did in variation one in the magenta was within the, the C to the C octave scale. Here we're going a B below C and a D above C octave. That was interesting. And that had already happened to us down here in the third variation. Uh, the other interesting thing is that when we were picking passing notes down here, we had to, we had to change everything around here. When we picked these particular passing notes, we started listening to the chords like this is a major chord what we call a passing chord it's not a chord down here this is not that chord but this this chord here and then we go from here to here there's another passing chord and then there's another passing chord from here to here And none of those are this chord. These these three passing chords that on the fly we barely hear in our the back brain of our perception. When we change the passing notes, they they totally change the mood and feel. The one thing we had was all minor chord, minor chord type of feeling, and then uh, the ones we ended up liking are different. So uh, it was a lot of work, and we did good work getting two lines through on variation two, including passing notes and passing chords. So let's listen to the first variation, two lines. And this one. And then the second line. Sounds different and still a consistency. 
Both of them are using the same energy story in the cadence layer. Both of them are uh, using backbone notes that come from the cadences. Both of them are using melody beat notes that agree with the backbone. And then both of them are using passing notes that are not included in the cadence, but are included in the scale, in this case, the C major scale. And so using those enforced consistency rules and then letting everything else change, we get a different sounding composition that still has its own internal consistency. Sirs and madams, wherever you are, thank you for your time and attention. Look forward to seeing you in the next stream. And as always, please keep streaming.